Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running. Welcome to another edition of Panther Sports Talk right here on WIU TV. I'm Rich Moser, joined this week by EIU men's basketball coach Jay Spoonauer. And coach, you guys going to hit the road here in the OVC. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes here as you're going to finish conference play on the road. You had two here at home this past weekend. We're able to get the first one at UT Martin. And then SEMO just kind of seemed to have enough in the tank at the end where they pulled out that win well, against you guys. They're good. Yeah. I mean, they, they're picked to win the league. And so they've had a flip-flop schedule from us in that they've been on the road uh, playing games. We've had home games. They've had hard games, hard home games too. Um, and so, I'm, I mean, I looked at who SEMO has lost to, and, you know, I don't think there's any games that you'd say, wow, they just – they blew it. I mean, yeah. they've gone on the road and played hard teams, and so uh, they were good. And they were they did, they did a good job of keeping their heads up and hanging in there. And and we played all right. I mean, we played pretty well. We we do we did some good things offensively. We guarded them pretty well. And I thought down at the end they made some plays. Uh, the you know they hit a, a hit a couple threes that were really big where we were dropping in and helping. Uh, and then when they did miss a couple, they had some guys go go kind of horse away from us and got offensive rebounds. But. It wasn't as though we just couldn't. Have, I mean, we, we were tied on the on the glass, 14 to 14. I mean, we, we played pretty well. They just uh, they made a few more plays. Thursday night, you guys came out against UT Martin, a team that beat you down there, and they they kind of came out really on fire. It seemed yeah. like anybody who had the ball couldn't miss. Your guys did a really good job of weathering the storm there, and then slowly made progress. And in the second half, those shots weren't going down, and you guys were able to, to take advantage. Well, these, I mean, all these home games were we, we needed to win. We needed to try to get them all, and we did, we did a pretty nice job. I mean, we're come out of this. We were in second place at the end of all that after SIUE and, and Martin, and would have liked to have get, gotten the SEMO game, but um, sitting there and sitting at second place for a while, we're sitting right at 500 right now, and you've got four of them going on the road, and it'll be you know be really really hard to even really to even get one of them. You're going to Murray, and you're going to to P on Thursday, uh, you go to uh, Belmont, and then end up the thing at uh, over at, at um, Edwardsville. So uh, you don't you don't look at them as a big group. You look at them as hey, let's go get Austin P. Yeah. Um, in the game against UT Martin, though, you guys were able to. I'm sure as a coach, you're, you're happy that you're able to really empty out the bench. Guys got to play some guys that hadn't played all year, or hadn't played in, in a number of games, and. Especially at home, that's got to be good. To, those guys give you great work during practice. I'm sure it's nice to be able to reward them every once in yeah, a while and get them in a game. We haven't had a game where it was decided, you know, in a while. We've had all pretty close games here lately, and um, and so it was good that Julian could get in there. You know, Siler got in, but he wasn't. Siler didn't get in there at the end. Siler made a big three in the yep. first half, um, and and you know he hasn't played as much as he wanted to. But he does a good job. He's just a hair behind a few other guys. Um, but but really, those are the two guys. Like Julian got get to play some as his first time out there, so that is good. Now and you also went with a, a little bit different lineup and two different teams you had to play there, and it seemed like you actually went bigger against UT Martin, which gave you the advantage. And then when you play SEMO, they may be if, next to you guys the the biggest team in the league. In fact, that they can run some big athletic guys out there mm -hmm. that can play away from the basket too. Yeah, well, and they have they have big strong guards, and so what you end up doing, like when you have Bradley. There's, we don't have anybody physically that matches with him, aside from maybe Kino can can physically match with him. Um, he's a six five, two hundred and fifteen pound, two hundred twenty pound guy. Um, and but we were doing what, what I sure you had Sherman and Pipe in there a lot together, which is maybe different than what we've done some early in the year. But they've been playing pretty well together. Um, Sherman Pipe Pipe's really played a lot better. Thing about Pipe Pipe has a hard time guarding. If you don't play him at a forward, he has a hard time guarding a guy. Who's a guard, and so that's kind of the dilemma that we have on, on stuff like that. But but um, you know, every matchup, the, the the one thing you're getting is that people have to worry about Sherman Blanford. Yeah. Sherman's having really really solid, consistent games every time, and basically whoever gets out there, if we can get some guy to go out there with him and, and play hard and play well for a while, it's pretty good. Now you guys will go back on the road this weekend, and one of the harder swings there is in the OVC. You guys have Austin P and Murray State, and Austin P on the front end, a team that you guys were able to get here in Lance Arena. Mm -hmm. So, 
you got to try to – I mean, it's hard to get a season sweep against anybody and yeah. the fact that you, you at least have an opportunity since you got the first one here at home. Yeah, I mean, you don't look at it as a sweep or anything like that. You look at it as, you know, they, they played pretty well over here and they were without a guard. Uh, they beat us inside. I mean, they were really good inside. And um, Horton and Triggs are both both very good players, and they're not they're not dissimilar from our guys. I mean, we've got Horton's big, and can block shots, tall guy, and Triggs is a lot like Sherm body body wise. And so um, it'll be really hard. They're hard to beat at home. I think they've been playing pretty well, um, and it's a game that they really really need to win. Uh, we're all all of us in our league right now. All the Gala teams are sitting there in the middle. We're all in the spot where we have to go win, and so which team can show up and knowing you have to yeah. win, go go perform. That game will be Thursday night. Uh, you'll be able to hear that on Hit Mix on the radio side at 7 o'clock. Then you guys go to Murray after that. Now, you haven't played these two teams, unlike where you had played SEMO two weeks ago and they were kind of fresh. It's, it's yeah. been a little bit longer for Austin P and Murray. Have you, have you seen either one of these two teams kind of change some things based on personnel or injuries that will be give you a different look in this upcoming weekend? No, I think everybody's doing a lot of I mean, people will put some different things in, but Murray is still what they are, and that is you know, I think some, other, some, some guys have really stepped up their play. You know, at the time that we faced them the first time, Cameron Payne was coming off a bunch of huge games, and, and then he came in here and played well. Uh, but Sap has been unbelievable here lately. I mean, he's had some 30-point games, and, and that's what you get. Uh, as, as the year goes on, different guys step up and come and go, and they have plenty of guys that can go make plays. That's the, that's the hard thing about Murray is that they've got everyone on their team at some point can go get you. And so, you know, whether it's Sap or Dexter Fields or whoever it is, it's, it's you know, going to be tough. We know Payne's good. I mean, I watched the Belmont game. I watched the Austin P game. Uh, you know, there's, there's guys out there making some pretty good plays. All right, Coach, best of luck down there this weekend. Reminder, Thursday, 7 o'clock on the radio against Austin P, and then 7.30 on Saturday down at Murray State. That'll be the back end of the men's and women's doubleheader down at Murray State. We'll be right back with this week in EIU Athletics. Off the screen between the circles. Fired at left wing to Verhagen. They lob it left block. Petrowski takes a dribble inside and dunked it. Petrowski maneuvered through two defenders and dunked it home. Eastern Illinois Panther basketball is on WEIU. It's an in-state battle at Lance Arena as EIU takes on Chicago State in the Panthers' regular season home finale. It's the Panthers and Cougars, Monday, February 24th on WEIU, your home for Panther basketball. Panther fans, here's what's going on in Panther Athletics. Men's basketball goes 1-1 one one at Lance Arena this past week, winning over UT Martin 91-79 and losing to Southeast Missouri State 74-68. The Panthers are now 6-6 six six in OVC play and 9-15 overall. Women's basketball improved to 5-6 in OVC play and 10-12 and overall, picking up a win over Southeast Missouri State at Lance Arena. 53-48. Indoor track competed at the Notre Dame Mayo Invite this past weekend, and they posted two first place finishes. Softball got the 2014 season underway. They start the season two and three. All five of their games this past weekend were at the Illinois Chicago Tournament, and both wins were against IUPUI. Men's tennis with a split on the road last week. They're now two and two to start the season. Their win came against St. Francis, Illinois, nine to nothing. And women's tennis starts the season 3-0 with a 4-3 win against Southern Illinois in Danville. Now here's what to watch for this week. On Thursday, men's basketball is back on the road and they're at Austin P at 7 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. On Friday, track begins a two-day run at the Grand Valley Big Meet with competition starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. And softball begins play in the Louisiana Monroe Tournament as they'll take on the host squad at 5.30, followed by a game against Grambling State at 7.30. Baseball with their first game of the 2014 season, and they'll begin a four-game series at Louisiana Lafayette with game one starting at 6 o'clock. And women's tennis on the road, they're at the Purple Aces of Evansville at 7 o'clock. On Saturday, track wraps up competition at the Grand Valley Big Meet with competition starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. Baseball with a doubleheader as they continue play against the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette. The first game of the doubleheader starts at 12 o'clock. And it's a Panther basketball doubleheader as both Panther basketball teams are at Murray State. The women's game at 515, the men's game at 730. Both games can be heard on Hit Mix 88.9 WEIU. And softball continues play at the Louisiana Monroe Tournament. They'll take on the host Louisiana Monroe at 530 and Grambling State again at 730.
On Sunday, softball wraps up competition at the Louisiana Monroe Tourney. They'll take on Houston Baptist at 10 o'clock in the morning. And baseball wraps up their series at Louisiana Lafayette with a 1 o'clock first pitch. And men's tennis is in Dayton, Ohio to take on Dayton at 1 o'clock. On Monday, women's basketball in Clarksville, Tennessee, as they'll take on OBC rival Austin P at 7 o'clock. You can listen to that game on HitMix 88.9 WEIU. And next Wednesday, February 19th, men's and women's swimming are at the Summit League Championships in Indianapolis as they begin a four-day run of competition. For Panther Sports Talk, I'm Ramin Kabasyun. WEIU is your home for Eastern Illinois Panther sports, Panther football. Here comes the blitz. Jimmy's going to throw it deep down the middle. Laura's out there. Got it. And he's on his way. Garoppolo burns the blitz. Touchdown, Eastern Illinois. Panther basketball. All the way. Laid it up. No, another dunk. Petrowski again. Back-to-back -back rebound dunk. Panther greats. WEIU is your home for Panther sports. Welcome back to Panther Sports Talk. We're now joined by EIU Associate Women's Basketball Head Coach Kim Foley. Coach Debbie Black's out on the road recruiting, and part of that, and, and Kim's been nice enough to fill in for us. This is the second time we've had you fill in during right. the year, but part of that is the way the schedule is played out. It's given you guys an opportunity to get out and, and do some recruiting for extended periods of time during the season, which is really when you want to do it because you want to be able to see the players in action playing. Really, it's been it's been great in that respect. Certainly, we've been able to get out on the road, and all of us have been able. And, sir, and with the new rule change that four can go out, I mean, we were all out yesterday, and, and it's been fun to see the talent that's in the area. It's you know laden with talent all throughout here, so it's good to be able to get out. And we just we're just doing the best we can to be out and be seen and, and understand that East Illinois is presence on the recruiting trail. Now, if you talk about that, you guys, the, the program has had success as a whole over the last really about five, six, seven years. And as a new staff, that that's got to be good for you guys when you're trying to go out there and knowing that there's been success a lot of times when there's when there's change in, in coaching right. staffs it's because success hasn't been there and so maybe a little bit easier getting into some of those doors from a recruiting standpoint I think definitely the brand is out there um, East Illinois from perspective on athletics is really well known I mean there's such great uh, legacy here in athletics across the board. So we're just going to build on that and bring in the new staff with the background that we have. We think we can enhance that and, and hopefully make a run towards an NCAA tournament birth here in the near future. Now you guys are coming off a, a big home win over Southeast Missouri the other day. It's third straight home win. Home game is always important to win. You guys only have one more conference one. Right. But that one big in the fact that now you are, have split the season series with a team that's kind of right there neck and neck with you guys trying to get into the OBC tournament. That was a huge win for us and you know as we go every every game is huge and it's a playoff atmosphere right now so each game needs to be approached that way but to, to be the team that had beaten us um, soundly on the road and to come back and, and win a game when we weren't playing our best we weren't shooting the ball well and that's been a little bit of a, a problem for us we haven't been able to recover as well as we would like and I think it was a big character game uh, hopefully it's a, a turning point for us to know that if the ball's not going in the basket we can still defend and we can win games now I know that it's been one of the, the big staples that coach black has had and I know it carries over you, you have a long relationship with her as a former teammate and then both on the college and professional level right. and what kind of adjustments have you guys tried to to make that when the ball is not going in the basket. Teams, a lot of times you'll see that deflation when offense isn't going in, and I think you guys right. have done a good job of, of not having that happen. I think, you know, <laughs> learned over the doing this for a long time that the ball has to go in the hoop. But both uh, Coach Black and myself prided ourselves as players on defense. We were both sort of known for our defense. So we need to have a team that defends well and defends um, to the best of their ability. And anytime you can defend well, you can be in a game. And that's the point that we've been really trying to hammer home, is there are days when the ball's not going to fall. If you continue to defend, that's the thing you can control, is the effort on the defensive end. You can't always control when the ball goes in the basket, but those are the things that we can't control. We have to control them when we can. Now, you guys will get back on the road this weekend, and you'll play a majority of your conference games will remain on the road. You'll have one more against UT Martin down in late February. But you're at Murray State and at Austin P this weekend. Murray State, you get on, on the front end of it, and a team that you guys have, have already beaten this year, so you're, in essence, going for the sweep. How do you, I guess, get a, get a team not to overlook a team you, you've already beaten on the season and realize that you know now you're going on the road, they essentially have the advantage being the home team? Yeah, I think I think it, it's the way we've been, been approaching each game is it's playoff time. 
and we have to win every game. And so we can only look at Murray State. We, don't, we can't worry about the Austin Peays and the UT Martins and the Belmonts and um, SIU Edwardsville. What matters right now is Murray State, and they're hungry, certainly. And when you when you lost to a team as they did to us, they're going to be really fired up to play us. I know they're been hit by the injury bug a little bit um, so they're going to want to play for those guys that have gone down and you know every game as we have learned uh, pretty quickly here is a battle uh, anybody can beat anybody on any given day and that's not a cliche that's fact now the other thing that, that you have now you haven't played we asked uh, Jay Spoonhauer here this a little bit earlier you guys haven't played them as recently as you played like a Southeast Missouri where some of those games and players are right. fresh in their head. What have you, and I know in particular you look at a lot of the, the, the film and, and kind of set up the initial scouting reports. What have you kind of seen differently that, that Murray State and Austin P are doing than what they did about a month ago when you played them last? You know, it's funny. Not everybody is is changing a lot. I mean, you are who you are and you try to enhance those skills and, and they're, you know, penetrate, kick out, shoot the three ball, both teams. Um, so, you know, we've got to be prepared for that and defend that again. And then in, in turn, we've got to play our style. So a lot of a lot of focus is, still remains on us. Um, as long as we're doing what we need to do, we feel, you know, we can put a good product on the floor. We're going to be competitive on any given night. So we'll defend um, them to the best of our ability, but it's about, you know, East Illinois right now, too. Now, EIU this year has been really good at home here. We played well in Lance Arena, which is our backdrop today. You guys have kind of had the, I guess, snake bitten is the nicest right. way to stay on the road this year. A couple of neutral site wins down in North Florida. And I know Coach Black thought you guys have kind of gotten over the hump with the road woes yeah. at that, but got back in the conference and have struggled a little bit. Is there something that you guys, some magic <laughs> formula you're still trying to roll out there to, to kind of give that first road win in the conference? We're just changing everything <laughs> up. Um, we're trying a road trip any way we can and to do something different. Um, you know, that's the thing. We, we can't figure quite figure that out yet. Um, you know, we feel like we're prepared, and when we take the floor, it's again that whole thing about if that ball doesn't initially go in the basket, you can't let down because you can lose to anybody on any given night. So on the road, that's there's not that crowd, there's not that that extra factor that's going to push you over the hump. We have to push ourselves over the hump. So we're ready. You know, we're actually excited about this road trip because we want to show that we can win on the road and perform well. All right, Coach, well, best of luck on the road. Reminder, the women will play at 5.15 on Saturday, the first game of the doubleheader. You'll be able to hear that game on HitMix 88.9, and then Monday they'll wrap it up on the 17th. 7 o'clock down at Austin P trying to exact revenge and even up the, the season series there with Austin P that beat them here in Lance Arena about a month ago. We're going to wrap up this week's show with some highlights from some of the recent home games here. Thanks for watching WIU Panther Sports Talk.
weak side to Piper. Left corner, Chapman. He'll take a three. That's good. Austin after the next bed to get ball. Ball goes in the post to Blanford, and he hits a four-footer from the right block over Tyler Stone. Ten to five, Eastern in front. Smith with it, a little hesitation move. Driving down the lane, lays it in. Reggie Smith took it in off a little hesitation drive. Nicky Nutt wants a timeout. We'll hold it here with 15.26 to go in the first half. Eastern ahead 12 to seven. We see Reggie Smith with a little hesitation dribble getting all the way to the glass for the scoop shot. Verhagen gets a low post, Austin. Double teamed on the baseline, out in the corner, Blanford, eight to shoot. Left corner, Austin, takes aim on a three, nailed it. Panthers shooting it pretty well from the outside. Reggie Smith, top of the key, over at the right wing to Piper for Eastern. Now at the foul line, Blanford, open lane, drives in, laid it up, good, he's fouled. Boy, they just left the Boulevard wide open for that drive. Back to Calvin, fires inside, nobody there, intercepted by Reggie Smith. Reggie runs it up three against two, pass to the head to Blanford, laid it up and good. Pass got tipped and a good adjustment by Blanford. It was, that really slowed the pass up. Toward the corner, now brings it to the top, turns the corner on the drive down the lane, layup, good. He had to really double pump that to get it by Stone. That was a very nice drive by Chapman. He beat that easily off the bounce. Reggie around the screen to the point. Now drives it into the lane. Holds in the lane, needs help, passed off to Austin. Three from the corner is good. Big basket for Austin, he's got 12 points. Panthers back within two with 10-15 to play. Six point lead again for Simo, they're in the full court press. Alex Austin works it up, gets it to Dickerson. Dickerson bounces it over the timeline to Reggie Smith. He drives it into the lane, behind the back to a dunk, Olivier. Nifty play by Reggie Smith. Well, that got the crowd into the ball game a little bit. Delay a game warning on Olivier. I suppose he will trade the warning for that. Smith, top of the key, drives into the lane, pulls up, left elbow jumper, good. Reggie Smith with nine points. I'm out, Southeast Missouri State. 60 to 57, Simo, top of the key, Blanford. In against Langford, he's got four fouls. Sherman sure, in close, put it up and put it in from four feet out. 17 for Blanford, it's 60 to 59. EIU down a point. Both players. Number 24 is Olsen with a big block in the middle. Two blocks now for Olsen. Payne has it running the floor was Karen Olsen. And coming off the offside screen was Paul and Bezio. And Southeast Missouri was spending so much attention watching Karen Olsen run down the floor. They completely lost track of where Morgan Paul and Bezio was. And a good job of once again making the extra pass. Pays off for the Panthers. It gives them their first lead of the game. Great look that time by Caitlin Payne as uh, she was able to get that block shot, take it down the court, was able to throw it above the zone and get it into Morgan Palombizio for the easy layup. Southeast Missouri feeling EIU's a little vulnerable right now. Gonna try to take advantage of it. They swing it all the way around. Caitlin Payne, there we go. And EIU's on the board now with one of those three pointers. Caitlin Payne leads EIU with 11 points right now. He's got one three pointer. Brunk comes around the screen, jumper at the free throw line is good, and then Brunk to Horasova, Horasova drives in, lowers the shoulder, and good hot, good layup. Brunk has it, gets it to Horasova, cutting back door, and the Panthers have found a money play there. Brunk has it off the inbounds, all the way down, Hunter guarding her, all the way down. Brunk draws the contact, makes the layup. Put a bit of smile on the face of the senior from Belleville. That was sheer determination that time by Jordan Crunk. She was taking it down the left-hand side of the floor. They give it to Orsova, triple team over to Palombizio to Crunk, fires a three, and that one is in. Panthers are up 48-43. Good patience by the Panthers. And a couple times today, they have taken that extra pass and have gotten a better shot because of it. Top one and two seed only have to win two. Extra pass there by the Panthers. Caitlin Payne in the corner for three, and that's good. They really worked the ball around. Crunk got it into Brown. Brown got it out to Payne, and Payne drained the three. Production for Panther Sports Talk is brought to you in part by Johnson's Automotive Service is a proud supporter of Panther Sports on WEIU. Johnson's is a complete car facility for all your automotive repair and maintenance needs. Johnson's Automotive Service, keeping your life running.